The topic of uh, this presentation is the analysis of Ecuador's Yasuni ITT initiative. A proposal presented uh, from Ecuador to the United Nations in 2007 to, kept, to keep indefinitely underground a very large oil reserve located below the Yasuni National Park, one of the most important biodiversity hotspots in the Amazon. First, we will begin with a very brief introduction about uh, the significance and problems linked with oil in Ecuador. Since 1972, Ecuador became an oil exporter, extracting oil from a recently discovered uh, field in the northern Amazon. After about half a century of oil extraction, it can be concluded that Ecuador didn't get the expected benefits from oil extraction. The country suffered a problem of low and unstable economic growth, which is fluctuating mostly accordingly with the widespread fluctuations of uh, oil international prices. Uh, Ecuador has reached a minimal economic diversification, policies that were intended to promote industrialization or diversify exports didn't work out. But the most important problems are first, a very weak social distribution of oil revenues, particularly in the Amazon Basin, which remains the poorest region in the country, and very high adverse environmental effects, mostly linked with the biodiversity loss and deforestation in the Amazon. After half a century of exploitation, the country is beginning to run out of oil reserves. So uh, reserves are expected to last no more than 10 or 15 years. And later on, Ecuador will begin uh, an, uh, to be a net oil importer. So uh, obviously, oil is a non-renewable res res resources. And uh, um, the oil period is coming to an end in the next years. Fortunately, the country has a very important potential for diversification towards a most sustainable and biodiversity-based uh, service economy. But this transition actually has not been uh, promoted yet. Well, here we can appreciate the huge impact of oil extraction in other Amazon. This map, which was part of, uh, of the PhD thesis of uh, Eugenio Papalardo, uh, uh, presents uh, in red color the deforestation, mostly in almost everywhere, associated with expansion of oil fields and oil developed infrastructures, such as, such as pipelines and roads. So the impact has been very large. Uh, we can conclude that uh, the cumulative uh, uh, deforestation in Ecuador has reached about 13%, which is the second highest among Amazon countries. And obviously this has a very important impact given that the land productivity of uh, agriculture in the Amazon is very low and declining over time. So uh, most of the area which is already deforested will become uh, useless in a very, very short period of time, about maybe 10 or 15 years. 
Well, uh, now we are going to the central point. The Yasuni National Park is uh, one of the most important biodiverse hotspots in the Western Hemisphere uh, and holds a, a large oil reserve underneath. The Ecuadorian government presented in 2007 the Yasuni ITT initiative to the United Nations with UNDP support. The objective of the proposal was to keep oil indefinitely underground in exchange for an international fund for sustainability. Uh, six years later, President Correa canceled the initiative and decided to promote oil extraction. A civil movement in Ecuador emerged, uh, proposing a national referendum about oil extraction. But uh, this, uh, in spite of the support of uh, 670,000 um, signatures, uh, the proposal was not accepted uh, in a fraudulent decision uh, from the Ecuadorian government, and the referendum never took place. Never it, it took place. Uh, after 2014, oil prices collapsed. It was preventing temporarily the oil extraction in the Yasuni National Park. But uh, after 2017, oil fields began to be exploited in the Yasuni National Park. Here we can appreciate the distribution of biodiversity uh, in South America, but particularly in the Amazon basin. We have four maps uh, with the colors, uh, close uh, reddish or red, indicating uh, the, the, the highest biodiversity and blue indicating the lowest. Um, we can see the concentration of uh, amphibians, birds, mammals, and plants. And here we have a small spot which uh, show us the location of the Yasuni National Park. Once all these maps are overlapped, we uh, have this map in which we can appreciate uh, uh, areas in which we uh, have the highest uh, biodiversity in four biological groups, in three of them, two of them, one of them, or no. Uh, so the red color indicates the most biodiverse areas in the Amazon basin, which is very close to the Yasuni National Park, which is also uh, presented in the in the in the chart in the in the map. Uh, we can see that the upper Napo River, uh, which uh, goes from the uh, from Ecuador to, to northern uh, Peru, is a very biodiverse uh, area. Uh, actually, the most biodiverse in the whole Amazonian region. In the Yasuni National Park, we have, as mentioned, as at the same time, uh, a very, very large oil reserve. Here we have some uh, photos about uh, different uh, uh, species. Uh, this is the Huatzin, and we have uh, 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 one of the uh, several species of monkeys. In, in, both photos were taken in the Yasuni National Park. The Yasuni initiative uh, have basically two uh, traits in its, in its structure. On the one hand, Ecuador committed itself to, kept, to keep the ITT oil fields inside the Yasuni National Park indefinitely unexploited. The reserve was 856 million barrels of oil of proven reserves, including probable reserves, the amount is 1.5 billion barrels. On the other hand, the international com community committed 
to compensate the country with an international fund administrated by the United Nations to be a market to finance only renewable energy projects, biodiversity protection, equitable social development, and uh, projects aimed to improving energy efficiency in the, in the country. That was essentially the structure of the Yasuni ITT initiative. It is important to mention that the expected uh, avoided emissions that will be the result of uh, living fossil fuels underground in the Yasuni National Park will uh, have resulted in a reduced emissions of more than 400 million tons of carbon dioxide. Adding up additional mitigation from avoided deforestation as a result of the initiative, uh, the total can uh, be above 8 million tons on carbon dioxide uh, avoided emission in, in, during a period of 30 years. It is important to mention that this amount is more than twice the annual emissions of very large countries such as Brazil or France. So the international significance of avoided emission coming from leaving the fossil fuels underground in this particular case, including avoided deforestation, the contribution to climate change mitigation is very, very large. The initiative uh, actually got a very, very significant support from different countries. Uh, in the case of Germany, uh, the Bundestag, uh, the parliament, uh, approved the initiative and recommended other countries to do so by unanimous, with unanimous support. Uh, 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 both uh, Germany and Spain supported in different ways economically the initiative. The initiative uh, also received uh, economic contribution from the region of Baronia uh, in Belgium and the region of Rhone Alps in, 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 in France, received uh, support from Italy and other European countries received also uh, a, a support from the international institutions so, such as the European Union, uh, the Organization of American States, even the OPEC, and the Andean Community of Nations. Five uh, Nobel Prize winners also supported the, the initiative. And uh, above all, uh, the national and international civil society also uh, mobilized uh, in favor of the Yasuni ITT initiative. So it was not a lack of support either from government, international institutions of the civil society that the initiative was canceled. The initiative was canceled mostly as a result of uh, interest linked with oil extraction and the lack of active and consistent support from the government by President Correa. Now, the situation is uh, quite difficult in the Yasuni National Park. Since 2017, oil extraction began and uh, the technology applied uh, for oil extraction it has a high environmental impact given the, the construction of open roads inside the park uh, to reduce extraction costs. Uh, unfortunately, the current government of President Lasso in Ecuador decided uh, to double oil extraction nationally in the next five years, ex expanding the intervention in the Yasuni National Park. Fortunately, the Constitution, uh, the Constitutional Court banned oil extraction in about half of the fields in Spingo, which is the most la the largest uh, part of the reserve. 
to protect isolated indigenous communities. Nevertheless, the national referendum about oil extraction in the national park never took place in spite of the support of uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of signatures and the favorable decision from the Constitutional Court. Nevertheless, a social movement, uh, Yas Unidos is, is the name of the movement, continues struggling to save the Yasuni Park uh, um, in the same way um, several uh, social institutions or organizations, including the, the indigenous movement in the Amazon, are also supporting the idea of uh, leaving the Yasuni Reserve unexploited and trying to save biodiversity and isolated indigenous communities in the national park. From the perspective of uh, these presentations, which are mostly linked with climate change, the legacy of the Yasuni ITT initiative is quite important because, mostly because it was the first and it's still the only international legal model for keeping fossil fuels underground in biodiverse hotspots in developing countries. Uh, the basic structure has been explained is a way in which uh, we have a, a, an opportunity that the several countries can be in the future using this model to receive an international compensation for avoided emissions uh, coming from living fossil fuels underground. The initiative has bought a significant contribution to reduction of uh, emissions, avoiding climate change, and also protects biodiversity, which is very important. Uh, several years after the cancellation of the Yasuni ITT initiative in 2013, the idea is still widely discussed and promoted in different international forums. Probably the most important uh, movement uh, to uh, keep alive this idea on promoting other ways of keeping fossil fuels underground is the Fossil Fuel Non-Proliferation Treaty Initiative, which is a movement based on the civil society of different countries, international civil society, to try to create a, 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 an international agreement to avoid the expansion and proliferation of fossil fuels. The idea also has received uh, a widespread academic support from different uh, uh, universities and international institutions. Uh, some of them can be mentioned, such as the Stockholm Environmental Institute, Oxford University, and the Australian National University. They promote uh, usually uh, every year a uh, conference about keeping fossil fuels underground and other uh, supply based mechanism of uh, climate change mitigation. And also it is important to mention that in addition to a widespread support that uh, the idea of keeping fossil fuels underground and saving the Yasuni National Park received in the case of Ecuador, there is a, a, a very extended uh, set of social movements all over the world uh, to support the idea of leaving fossil fuels underground. So the idea presented uh, more than 10 years ago by, by Ecuador is still alive is still feasible and can be uh, applied uh, in the future. Thank you.